Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver. And I'm Kira, and today we're going to be taking a look at Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Introducing the two player starter set from Modiphius. This comprehensive box equips you with everything you need to embark on your adventures. In Fallout Wasteland Warfare, players have the freedom to assemble their own crew from an extensive array of factions, allies, and beloved characters from the Fallout universe. Engage in standard points based battles, or tackle random missions with narrative driven objectives. Whether you prefer PvP, co-op or solo play, all gameplay modes are fully supported. Alright, so Fallout. You've played Fallout, so you love Fallout. I love Fallout. I think I've played it since Fallout 1. So yeah, for years How now. many Fallouts are there? 76. <laughs> there is Fallout 76, but I don't think there's 76 Fallouts. But good knowledge, what about yourself? Have you played much then? I've never played Fallout. I know the setting, I know the style, I know the music. I'm excited for the series, um, but I've never played it. Yeah, ye, it's, ye it's olden too, it's music. It's too spooky for me. Yeah, you don't like first person shooters, right? I do not like first person anything. I don't even like the first person experience of life. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking around. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to open the setup. I think we'll take a look at some miniatures. Now, they might mean less to you because you don't know who they are, but that's okay. Dog meat. Look at you. Fallout 76, dog meat, dog meat is in here, exactly. That's all I know. <laughs> That's enough. So yeah, we're going to take a look at the miniatures. We'll paint them up and then we'll probably play a little game at the end just to get an idea of it. And we'll come back to you guys and let you know what we thought. I'm going to be tackling the survivors whilst Kira goes in for the super mutants. The first thing to note is that these are unpainted, pre-assembled, multi-part PVC models. The kind you'd be used to seeing in most board games. They're sturdy and flexible, but don't have the sharpest of features, particularly around the faces. To enhance the details and establish base colours, I applied multiple spray cans to the models. In this painting session, my focus lies on the iconic Survivor and Dogbeat models, although I intend to paint the rest as well. Beginning with washes and dry brushing, I aim to layer colours and textures, steering clear of the hyper-futuristic, high-contrast schemes typical of Space Marines. Instead, I strive for a gritty, realistic aesthetic in line with the game's theme. Using downward paint strokes, we can really start to bring out the details on these sculpts. Building up colours is important, and as you start to get to the light blues, make sure to only apply minimal amounts to the high areas. For dog meat, I employ various brown paints, starting with an airbrush, to maintain dark shadows and enhance visual depth. Dry brushing adds further detail and texture, lending a weathered appearance. Unless you want to spend hours painting each hair, this is probably the way to go. All in all, I found the painting process for these models to be surprisingly easy. The final touches involve adding intricate details to bring them to life. Using the box art as a rough guide, I opt for contrast paints. Black for the hair, dark brown for leather, brown for the gun, and lead belcher for other metallic elements. Off camera, I've done a ton of work on the other models too. Even finishing up the T60 power armoured Aspirant Goddard. It was an absolute pleasure to paint and I really enjoyed slamming on all of those cool rust effects. To help separate any of the details, I spent quite some time highlighting various parts of the models. The trick here, I think, is to focus on areas you want to draw attention to, the faces, the guns, or whatever parts you want to stand out. Don't sweat the little things. They really came into their own when the pre-sculpted bases get some paint. Add a tuft or two and we're almost there. Kira painted the Super Mutants live on her Twitch stream using pretty similar techniques. The final step is to add some dusty pigments. They're dead easy to use, as simple as smushing it onto the bases and the lower parts of the models. You can really add as much or as little as this as you feel you want. Now for only a few hours work, I think they make for great play pieces. Just don't overcomplicate them and I think you're golden. I'm keen to get stuck into some of the resin models as I know they're incredibly good quality and adding a few raiders to this set should get me that nice fallout feel. I painted the super mutant and his two friends. The super mutant is just like a regular mutant, only super. Um, apparently he was supposed to be green. We've gone a different way. We're not going to talk about that. Um, but with the beasts, we relied heavily on zenithal and contrast paints. Super easy, super quick. Really, really fun to paint. If you like the look of these models and are eager to explore more, why not visit the Modifius store and browse their extensive collection? With a diverse range of options, there's something to suit everyone's tastes. Modiphius offers the perfect starting point with this two-player starter set. Alternatively, you can choose from a variety of individual boxes or convenient bundles tailored to your preferences. These models are available in resin too for those extra sharp details. So go ahead and click on the links in the description to check them out. All right, the minis have been painted. You did five, I did three. Mm -hmm. And I picked the easier ones. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. How did you find them? Good, they were, actually only took me maybe two or three sessions to kind of get them done. 
Um, I, I think the trick with these PVC plastic ones is they haven't got super sharp details, particularly on faces and things, right? Yes. Whereas that they're, the modifious resin ones are really, really sharp. So these do almost lend themselves slightly more to, to board game play pieces. Than like... So these come with the game, and then can you buy the the resin ones separate yeah. to replace these? Absolutely, yeah. You can buy all the factions as well in oh, resin. It's okay, a core right. set, so like the Brotherhood of Steel are these kind of Terminator dudes. Oh, got. so if you're big into your painting and your minis, you get the other ones, and if you're not that... I dropped my phone. If you're not that bothered about that and you just want to play the game, then stick with these ones. Yeah, exactly. Um, they come pre-coloured, like we saw, so at least that way you know who's what. But yeah, they took me a couple of sessions. I thought they were a little bit rough until I kind of came together at the end and did the pigments and rust mm -hmm. effects. Um, I know you only got a couple done, but I mean, we, we were busy elsewhere for a while there. But yeah, not your normal style though, probably? No, a little bit more grungy, grim kind of looking than I'm used to, but no, they were an easy, easy paint, especially the dogs. Yeah. But yeah, I'm happy with them. I painted this guy the wrong colour, but what can you do? Yeah. I, I didn't know they were supposed to be green. They're meant to be green, but who cares, yeah. right? It's, That's yeah. so cliche. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, so what we're going to do, I think, now is we'll set the board up and we'll have a look at the rules. Be be prepared Yep. for that one. I'm ready. It's, uh, I'm not sure you are for the amount of tokens involved okay. in this game, Easy. but we'll do that. We'll set a game up. We'll have a little game and then we'll come back to you guys at the end and let me know what we thought. Here we have all the cards, tokens, booklets, and everything else you need to play the game. This box does come with a really helpful Getting Acclimated booklet, which actually helps you through a few missions, teaching you how to play the game in a step-by-step -step fashion. The tokens and dice do honestly seem a little overwhelming at first, but once you start to play, they make a little more sense. The character cards give you everything you need to know about the model. You also get alternative versions for when you're playing against the AI, including how they respond in different situations. It is very clever. Players take it in turns to activate models one at a time. When active, you could do two actions, move, just like that, shoot, charge, or various other things. The whole game is based on skill checks using your character stats, much like in the Fallout video game. Rolling a d20 along with other modifying dice, you're aiming for a number equal to or less than the stat you're aiming at. Having played through the learning missions, Kira and I decided to give it a go. Her big monster with the two beasties against a couple of survivors we gave ourselves six turns to see how things would go. And honestly, it took about an hour and a half to pick up all of the rules and play the full game, but we had a pretty good time doing it. Okay, I'm gonna use my second activation to shoot my pipe pistol at this guy. I don't know who that guy is, but we're gonna shoot him anyway. So, I'm gonna roll all three of my dice. We're looking for a six or less. I got a seven. So I don't know what that means. Do I just miss? Yes. I missed. <laughs> Now I was a little slow to get going with this, it took a while for the rules to seep into my brain but once we got going we both really really enjoyed this. Um, I enjoyed it all the more because I won. Um, don't be surprised, I am the superior gamer of the two. Uh, but I also really enjoyed playing on this board, I think it's always uh, more fun when you can have a totally immersive experience and this board really lent itself to the style of the game. Um, the models are cool, the game's cool. The dice are pretty cool as well, although they did confuse me at first. But yeah, totally recommend this. Uh, there I am. Look at me go. <laughs> and there we have it. We've done the whole box. We've played a game. We painted some miniatures. First or last impressions, what do you think? I really like it. I was totally overwhelmed when I saw it coming out of the box because there's so many pieces, like the measuring things and different dice and tokens and cards. And usually for me, my brain shuts off, but having you two explain it to me, it's actually simple. It's, it's not, yeah, that, not I, that, well, it's not simple, but it's not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. I felt kind of the same way to be honest. I played a lot of games. Um, I opened the box up and was like, whoa, like yeah. two full sheets of one million tokens. The reality is though, how many of them do we even use? Like mm. three different tokens. Um, so that's not so bad. And, and gameplay wise, you've played a lot of skirmish games, you know, mm -hmm. you play Warcry, Kill Team. Yeah, I, the activations and stuff, like, that all makes sense. Yeah. I think it was just, the dice threw me off, because, you know, you roll a dice and you're like, I got a milkshake bottle or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... Mil <laughs> the milkshake brings all the, 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 I don't know, raiders to the yard. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the little cards are quite nice. And as you say, it took us, what, maybe an hour and a bit there to do four turns. Mm. Now, I have played Skyrim by Modifius as well, and the game is very similar, so that to me was helpful. But I felt the same way playing that. It took me two full game sessions so you can have no yeah. idea what's going on. Um, we haven't played obviously all the full rules, but it is pretty good. Would you would you fancy painting something else at some point? Did you like the models? Yes, my favourite models that I've seen are not even here. They're those 
Are they bat flies? Blow flies? Blow flies? Bot flies? Blow yeah. Flies? Forget, some forget some sort of going. flies, anyway, they're really cool. But yeah, it kind of suits everybody because if you like painting people, there's plenty of people, um, or mechs and different stuff like that. I prefer painted creatures and there's no end to the amount of creatures you can get for this. So. Yeah, you've got a man and his dogs. Here. Yeah. And I've got a little normal dog. So yes. it's quite cool. Yeah, I, I would I would recommend it. Um, I think it is a steep initial learning curve, I think is the only thing. Right. And so it takes you a while to really push through. Now it does have an AI system, which I'm relatively familiar with, a game from, from Skyrim game. I've never tried playing it myself before. Yeah, solo play, it's kind of cool. I mean, it works really well. They've done a really good job of that. And I think they've kept it very true and quite faithful to Fallout as a kind of a series, uh, as the game as well. It's in depth, it's complex. I'm getting slightly confused because I've got a baby, uh, a three week old baby in the background here, cooing and crying away. So apologies if you can hear um, just sort of random gurgles. Uh, it's, it's a baby. Um, so yeah. Ultimately, cool game, happy. Thank you to, for, to Modifius for sending this over to us as mm -hmm. well and taking a look at it. Check out all the links in the description if you want to get it yourselves. There's a link to Modifius if you're in the UK or US or Europe. Also, the Broadsaw Wargaming Shop stocks this as well. How convenient. Um, so make sure to check out the links. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Kira for joining us as no well. No problem. And I'll catch you guys in another one.